morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Zoom service. We also welcome all those that will be joining us in, in, on the YouTube later. My name is Ngozi, and I'll be leading the service. Blessed are you, O Christ, light of the world. You descend into our darkness to lift us into the realms of light. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. Amen. Can we go to the next slide, please? And Stephen and Fiona lead us in our worship songs. And Gozi, thank you. Thanks for that. And as we come to our time of worship now, we're going to have two songs. The first song will fit exactly with the reading that Clem will be reading to us later from Revelation 7. And following that, we've got a new song, which um, I hope you'll really enjoy as we worship our Lord. But first, salvation belongs to our God. song as I said this, this is called the song of Moses but actually in verse 3 it declares again how we all together will praise and glorify our God so you'll pick it up I'm sure as we sing it it's just a lovely lovely new song by Aaron Keyes song of Moses oh the Lord our strength and song Storms of hell pursue in dark. 
darkest night, we worship you. You divide the raging sea. From death to life, you'll safely lead. Praise the Lord, our mighty warrior. Praise the Lord, that glorious one. By his hand, we stand in victory. By his name, we Sings and angels bow, hosts of heaven crying loud, glory, glory to the King, you reign for all eternity. Praise the Lord, our mighty warrior, praise the Lord, that glorious one, by his hand we stand. for us to confess our sins to our, our merciful God. Next slide, please. We all say together, please. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy, and work humbly with you, our God. Amen. The next slide, please. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sin and restore us in his service to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Next slide, please. As Claire reads the word of God to us. Reading today is, is from uh, Revelation chapter 7, beginning from verse 9 to the end. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four creatures, living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor 
and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where do, did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serving day and night in his tem temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again would they hunger. Never again would they thirst. The sun will not beat them, beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Claire. Jen will be sharing the word of God with us. Thank you, Jen. Thank, thank you, Clement, for, for reading that to us. Um, we don't often hear Revelation being uh, preached on, do we? Perhaps it's because we don't want to think about the end times. But Revelation is, as the title describes, a book that reveals God's plan for his creation and his people and the church. And as the first verse of the book states, it is Christ's revelation to show his servants what must soon take place. So I pray this morning as we study this short, uh, short verses of Revelation, just pray that we'll receive that promise of blessing that John writes in verse, um, verse three of chapter one. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. The last book of the Bible is written by John in his later years whilst living in exile on the Greek island of Patmos and following letters to the seven early churches in Asia John records his vision giving us a prophetic glimpse into the heavenly throne. And as we sort of launch into the verses that we've heard this morning, it's a bit like we've walked in to see someone carefully unwrapping a gift and almost all of it is revealed. We've missed out on what might have been revealed as each strip of tape has been carefully peeled back to show a bit more of what is contained inside. Well, I suppose it depends on how you unwrap presents actually, doesn't it? My father used to um, carefully strip back the tape I don't know whether he wanted to use the paper again, but it was just that anticipation, I think, of, of enjoying the moment of unwrapping. <laughs> anyway, so I'll just give a quick recap on what's happened before. John watches as God gives a scroll with seven seals to the worthy lamb, Jesus Christ. And as the lamb opens each seal one by one, more of the vision is revealed. And our reading is part of the sixth seal being opened. Just before it, we read in um, chapter, chapter six that one side shows a great earthquake and we have a graphical description of Earth's, Earth's destruction on the day of judgment. And our reading describes the other side of the seal being lifted to reveal the promise of what is to come. And as the seal is completely broken, John sees this great multitude worshipping and praising God and the Lamb in the heavenly throne room. It's quite a contrast between those two scenes, isn't it? I wonder, I'm sure many of us probably have had a nightmare. And Tom Wright compares the scene to, to awakening from a terrifying nightmare. And as you re realise you're safe in your own home, 
there's that gradual awareness of what was just a dream, albeit bad one, and what is real, that you've woken up safely in your own bed. He writes that this other side of the seal reveals the heavenly reality, which is absolute truth against which the nightmare must be measured. <coughs> a reality that must be grasped for dear life as you plunge back into the nightmare. I'm not dismissing the, the, the pain and suffering, poverty and hardship and anxiety that we face on this earth. And it feels like today, doesn't it, that perhaps we are living that nightmare that COVID is. But I want us this morning to grasp the reality of the hope that we have in Jesus. So I'd like us to look at two questions this morning. So if we can have the first slide, Natasha. So who is this great multitude? In verse nine, it says, after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and in front of the lamb. And as one of the elders asked John in verse 13, these in white robes, robes, who are they and where did they come from? Well, he actually answers his own question in the next verse. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation, which may refer to the persecution of the early church then and prophetically in the future. And earlier in chapter seven, a great multitude is also mentioned, comprising of 144,000 made up of the tribes of Israel. And I'm sure we've got some good mathematicians amongst us. And you can work out that 12 tribes is 12,000 each, giving us 144,000. And numbers are significant in the Bible, aren't they? There were 12 disciples and there are many more references to the number 12 in Revelation. As well as symbolising God's power and authority, it represents completeness. So I believe the 144,000 represents all believers, too many to even contemplate counting and from every corner of the world. And, it, and we're told that each of these 144,000 are marked. They have a seal on their foreheads to protect these servants of God and save them from the further destruction in the final days. Uh, the next slide, please, Natasha. The original Greek word for seal is sfrazagis, fraz, uh, sorry, sfragizo. We need a costa, don't we, for that? It means, and uh, the word seal means uh, to set upon, to verify ownership and guarantee the promise of what was sealed. And there's a picture of here of a tiny child being baptized and um, marking the, the forehead with a symbol of the cross. And because of COVID, it has been a long time since we've had a baptism in church, but I'm sure you remember the words that are said at this signing. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. And in 2 Corinthians 1, Paul writes, he set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. The Holy Spirit living in us is that that sign, that um, guarantee, um, a deposit that we have for our, for our hope in, that we have in Christ. Just as a seal protects the contents of the sacred scroll, these believers, as are all followers of Christ, have a seal of God's protection. It doesn't mean we're protected from physical harm on this earth, I know, but our spirit, our soul belongs to God. And we can recognise who this magnificent gathering of believers is because of what John sees and hears. They're worshipping by waving palm branches victoriously, um, an, an image that we can recognise as the crowds 
welcoming Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And they're also dressed in white robes, which is another sign of victory and white being purity. In verse 14, it says, they are wearing robes, washed, made white in the blood of Christ. Can we have the next for, uh, slide, please? It's not a slogan you'd use for a personal advert, is it? Uh, this image, though, is a beautiful description of the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus through his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection. It's an image that was previously revealed to Isaiah. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. And also in Hebrews, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered him unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. By the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed from our sin, purified with no blemish or stain. By his blood, we have our salvation. And the word salvation here in verse 10 means rescue. They cried out in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Because this multitude are confident in their salvation, they praise God as their rescuer and, and saviour. Our eternal life in him a life of abundant blessings starts here on earth the second we say yes to Jesus. We don't wait until we reach heaven's doors to taste God's goodness and to worship his greatness. We, like John, who had a glimpse there of heaven, we experience a taste of heaven here on earth as a believer of Christ. And verse 15 leads us into the rest of the scripture, saying, therefore, or it's because of this, they are before the throne of God. The next slide, please. So this leads us to uh, my second question. Who are they worshipping? I'm sure, yeah, that is, it, it's an obvious answer, isn't it? We do know who they're worshipping. We know who we worship. And I wonder, as you listen to this scripture being read, did you start to visualise the scene John was describing? I wonder what stood out to you. Which images did you relate to? The next slide, please, Natasha. Was it holding palms? Was it wearing white robes, worshipping face down? Or the image of Jesus as our shepherd? For me, what struck me was the lack of inhibition or embarrassment as they worshipped God in his throne room and no distractions. It was their sole purpose to worship and something which they gave their 100% devotion. For me, what a beautiful thing that is. And verses 15 to 17 give us a wonderful description of God using references from Isaiah and the Psalms to name characteristics of the God we worship and serve. Verse 15. He who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. God will spread his tent over them just as he pitched his tent in the midst of the Israelites in the wilderness. God not only allows us into his presence, he will shelter us with his presence. We know God to be our refuge. And God protects and provides in verse 16. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. God provides as well as protects. He provides physically and spiritually and in John 6, 
in um, is one of the I am's. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And in verse 17, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. It's where we find a freedom in him who sustains us. And perhaps the most intimate description of God as our loving father. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. It's such an image of intimacy, compassion and eternal love. A promise that there will be no more weeping or suffering in heaven. The early church and its members under persecution would have been greatly encouraged to press on and endure from John's account. And we may not face martyrdom for our faith in the UK, but we do suffer other trials and tribulation. As Christians, we're not spared suffering and sorrow on earth, but we have the promise that God is with us and gives us the strength to endure it. It's an inner security which is not affected by external trials and the promise of eternal life. And in John 6, further on, talking about Jesus as the bread of life, he says, he who comes to me will never go hungry and he believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at that last day. John's vision is of the new Jerusalem to which we look forward. And today on All Saints Day, we remember all the saints, all believers who have gone before. We share their same hope in Jesus. If we remain faithful and loyal, serving the Lord, and we can join them in praising God as this multitude does in, in verse 12. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Stephen and Fiona are going to lead us now for a few minutes. Imagine being one of that great multitude, belonging together, praising our majestic, awesome God. If you don't know Jesus as your saver, saviour, or you're not confident of your salvation, then be assured that Jesus has an open invitation to everyone to have new life in him. Now, I know we are always in God's presence, but he loves it when we spend time intimately with him. So often we can come to him with anxious prayers and a long list of helps. But in these next few minutes, it's a time to step confident, confidently into God's throne room, praising him with Jesus the Lamb, as we soak in those promises of protection and shelter, refuge, of love and abundant life, and even letting him wipe tears from our eyes. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, lead us now. Reveal to us more of the Father's love. Take us deeper and fill us with your peace. Build us up in your strength. Amen.
Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Stephen and Fiona. That was lovely. Leslie will be leading us in prayers. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Ngozi. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, as we come before you, we want to praise you and thank you for the vision in your word today from Revelation. The mighty picture of countless people worshipping you and bowing down before you saying praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to you, our God, forever and ever. It is a beautiful picture and one to hold on to during these troubled times. Indeed, as we have sung, salvation belongs to you who sits upon the throne, and we declare aloud your glory, wisdom, honour, and power. You are our strength and our song, and we have been purified by our blood, and we take such comfort in that, Lord, now. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints. Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is such comfort and promise in that reading from Revelation. So many tears have been shed over the last few months and so many more to come. But Jesus will ultimately wipe all those tears away. Now, Lord, we'll bring our prayers of intercession to you from our prayer card. We thank you for our church family at St Mary's and across the wider network of churches in Harlow. Thank you for the many examples of how we have all worked together for the benefit of those in need across the town during the last few months. We particularly lift to you the community at Freshwaters Christian Fellowship and ask for your blessing on their spiritual growth at this time and we also continue to remember the community at Church Langley without a leader. We ask that you continue to deepen our relationships and that whilst we may be physically apart you will keep us united with you in love for one another as our neighbours and extended Christian family. Where we are blind to what is needed please open our eyes so that we can support one another Give us the knowledge and understanding of the best way to reach out to communities at this difficult time, and particularly those moving into the new housing in Gildon Park. And beyond our own churches in the UK, we pray for revival and growth in Christian communities across South America, Africa and Asia, and specifically growth in areas such as China and for revival in Europe. As we look forward, we ask your blessing on our planned activities for Remembrance Sunday. Lord, we know that we're going to have to rethink some of what was planned and that is going to be disappointing. But we do ask that those that are working through those plans find a way through and find a way that your name will be honoured and there'll be opportunities for local people to come into the church and um see something that might inspire them, might cause them to ask questions. And for those of us that know you already, Lord, that it will be a haven, somewhere we can come and pray and be particularly close to you. Lord, we're in the midst of the second wave, which we knew was coming, but is now very scary and very real. Lord, so much of our country and the world are living under tighter restrictions in an attempt to quell the spread. And we're going to be moving into our second national lockdown of this year in the coming week. Lord, we pray for stamina and resilience at, the at this time. And we pray for wisdom for those in government, the NHS and in public health to know the right balance to take, to protect us, and also to protect businesses and our livelihoods. And we continue to pray for the progressive development of the vaccine. And we also lift before you, Lord, those that are being affected indirectly by the virus. So those people that are not suffering with COVID, 
but have other medical and physical needs who are waiting for important hospital consultations, diagnosis and treatment. We lift them to you, Lord, now and ask that somehow they will be given some priority and capacity found. And we ask your blessing on those working in the NHS as they go through more months of this unprecedented time. Lord, we can't begin to think um, how they must be feeling now after what's been before, but we ask that you give them your strength, your fortitude and your energy and your peace. We ask that you keep us united as a church family, moving together at this time, sharing love and kindness with those in our neighbourhood and community. And we pray for your protection on those that are subject to additional risk due to their work or living arrangements and those that find that their mental health is suffering due to so many months of anxiety and isolation. Lord, we pray ultimately for a solution and an end to this situation. Lord, now we're going to bring to you those people within our church family and wider community that we know are in great need at this time. The names that I have before me amongst so many that need extra special prayer at the moment are Pat, Stan, Audrey, Sarah, Jenny and Sheila, but those are not all. So I'm going to pause a minute for us to bring silently in our hearts all of those that we have concerns for that are on the prayer card and those that we've been praying for in our prayer group. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting your word and obeying your will, we may enter into the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we ask all of these things in your precious son's name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's join together saying the words that our Father God taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you. The from Stephen and Fiona. Thank you, Stephen and Fiona. Thank you, Ngozi. And we're going to sing this glorious, glorious hymn, The Saints Together, a love divine. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory in thy perfect love.
of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us and may the gifts of our spirit, of your spirit, equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. Thank you, everybody. It's now time for us to go to our breakout groups. 